Today, we're going with the flow. Hello, my name is Brendan, and I'm an architect. When architects talk about design, they like to use metaphor, narrative, art, intuition, and human experience. My name is Arne, and I'm an engineer. And for engineers, the immutable laws of science, mathematics, and empirical data are the typical pillars of design. So we each have our way of working which is comfortable for us. Art and intuition on the one hand, science and mathematics on the other. But when we chose to get together to solve a vexing design problem, we knew we had to get out of our comfortable design silos and get uncomfortable. Our proposition was this. If we could get out of our comfort zones, we might just invent the next mousetrap. <laughs> we, we had to challenge each other's conventional wisdoms. We had to start with three very simple questions. Why? Why not? And how? So, a marriage of art and science. Could it produce something unique? We thought so. And we did, and today we're gonna to share that with you. But to, in order to take you on the journey, we're gonna rewind the clock. Seven years. Brisbane, January 2011. Brisbane is being battered by the biggest deluge in close to 40 years. Dams have overflowed. Lives have been lost, whole townships washed away and billions of dollars in property damage is occurring right before our eyes as Brisbane is inundated. Even our strongest structures seem fragile in the face of this event. Our infrastructure is vulnerable in extreme weather and this exposure is growing. How do we as designers respond? We took this as our challenge to design new ferry terminals for Brisbane that would be resilient to future floods by working with the forces of nature. So it was important that we didn't respond dumbly by repeating history. We knew we couldn't increase exponentially every element of the new ferry terminals in some futile arms race against nature. This would never work. So, where to begin? Watching the old terminals fail made us ask the question, why? Why did the previous terminals fail? The answer is not that they were not strong enough, but that they were not clever enough to work with the flow and not against it. Firstly, their profile presented a broad, blunt obstruction to the flood, incredibly vulnerable to destruction. We knew intuitively, we couldn't repeat that model. We would have to craft a new terminal that presented the smallest possible target so that the next deluge and the next flood would simply go around it. We all know that square-fronted boats don't perform well. And for that matter, when is the last time you saw a square-fronted fish? So why would we expect square-fronted pontoons to behave any better? The previous terminals had pontoons that were shaped like a brick. They were not streamlined at all. And when the flood hit them, they behaved like a brick. They, they capsized and they sank. Our solution was deceptively simple. We designed a new pontoon shaped like a boat. Simple and yet it seemed that nobody had thought about doing this before. The new pontoons have a hull shaped just like a working river vessel, with a slender bow facing upstream into the flow. When the next flood comes, these pontoons will simply plane through it. So it seems our new streamlined pontoon was an important piece of the jigsaw puzzle. But how to keep it in place? Conventional wisdom had dictated that pontoons be held in place by a cage of multiple pylons. These pylons would guide the pontoon up 
and down on the tide or restrain them in a flood. But there are two issues. Issue number one, they are incredibly ugly in their... <laughs> <laughs> they are incredibly ugly in their everyday lives. Issue two, in a flood, they're not particularly efficient. They create an environment where debris will bridge between the piles, creating a miniature dam, which then applies an enormous load. Observing this aspect made us ask that same question. Why? If every element in the water is subject to destruction, why have more elements in the water than you need? Why have multiple pylons? It turns out there was no good answer to that question. <coughs> so our solution only has one. But that one pylon becomes very special indeed. We craft it as an element that sits at the apex, the bow of the new pontoon. We build into it lighting. We build into it signage, a crumple zone. And of course, it still tethers the pontoon in its everyday life. But in flood mode, it will stand upstream like a silent sentinel, deflecting the many objects and debris we know will come barreling down the river. It will protect the pontoon from destruction. And of course, it's now high enough to cope with a much bigger flood. So, a new paradigm for the pontoon, a new paradigm for the pier. So far, so good getting uncomfortable had yielded results. But now for the really tricky part, the gangway. The sloping gangways span out across the river, linking the floating pontoons to the shore. The trouble is, when submerged in a flood, the previous gangways presented a broad obstruction. In other words, they behaved like miniature dams in the river. And what we don't need is structures behaving like dams when they're not meant to be dams. The previous gangways bore the full brunt of the flood, collecting debris, suffering impact. These compounding effects saw them destroyed or torn away. How can we avoid this? Our solution? Just let the flood go past. Take the gangway right out of harm's way. Sounds simple enough? Well, it is if you let the flood do the work for you. We placed a buoyancy tank under the gangway, which allows it to float up with the flood and detach from the shore. The flood current pivots it downstream, where it tucks neatly behind the pontoon and out of harm's way. The pontoon... <laughs> the pontoon and the gangway then trail in the slipstream of their protective pier. It uses only the flow of the river as its energy source to do this. It goes with the flow. No human intervention is necessary. Let's face it, when the next flood comes, no people should be put in harm's way to protect the ferry terminals. This is a set and forget solution to flood resilience. So that's three innovations in one project. Let's go for four. <laughs> we took on one more challenge, universal access. We accept that equality and access are basic human rights. So our public transport systems should allow dignified access for all. People needing wheelchairs, the semi-ambulant, the elderly, parents with heavy prams, there's a long list. Unfortunately, in an instance like Brisbane's ferry network, the tidal range is such that the gangways linking the shore to the pontoon are often long and intimidating runs of a single slope. The codes require regular horizontal landings in all ramps to provide equitable access. But of course, if we tried to insert these horizontal landings in this scenario, it simply would not work. The horizontal landings would stay horizontal for one brief moment in each tidal range. This would cause a bigger problem than the one we were trying to solve, right? 
So, conventional gangway designs have remained a long and intimidating single run of sloping surface. The ultimate compromise because it has seemed impossible to do what is really needed. Impossible until now. <laughs> Taking concepts from cargo handling machinery, a new idea came to life. It is a hinged hanging floor that moves inside the gangway structure. It has regular landings that remain level always, no matter what the tide is doing. Safe and compliant access is now a reality. The challenge of improving accessibility is a global one, but this solution has been developed and delivered for the first time right here in Brisbane. <laughs> What's more, it uses only the movement of the tide to do this. No power or electronic control is needed. It simply goes with the flow. So, a marriage of art and science, it would seem, has produced something unique. The power of the tides is now harnessed to provide equitable access to our ferry network system. And on some future day, these terminals will harness the awesome energy of Brisbane's next major deluge as the very means to their own preservation. These terminals should stand proud as a symbol of Brisbane's commitment to integrated design. More robust, yes, but smarter, more agile, more insightful. Intelligent infrastructure can work with nature and not against it. Thank you. Thank you.